Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and uh, today I thought I would take a little piece of criticism that someone gave in my Jerry Ward video I did the other night, and let's turn it into a learning and educational experience, because they pointed out, hey, there's a big contradiction here, and people need to realize sometimes when you think I've contradicted myself, maybe I have, but if I thought it was a contradiction, I wouldn't have said it, and that's something you need to keep in mind, that maybe I'm looking at a different context. And too many people take things as absolutes. They take things as absolutes. So when you say, if A happens under X circumstance, and then you switch over and say, well, well, B is what happens under Z circumstance, they can't break up the circumstance. They're only hearing the initial part. And in this case, when we talk about really, really lightweight for high reps, people were confusing two different things. They're confusing what has been shown in a lab versus what happens when guys who use large amounts of drugs suddenly come off their drugs, all right? We don't have lab studies on that. And people need a context for that, but we do have anecdote and real world experience. Uh, now, with the lightweight, uh, yeah, I have previously said, as someone with a strength athlete background, I do not like to accept this fact, but I grudgingly accept the fact that there is enough studies at this time, there are enough well done studies at this time to show that using very lightweight for very high reps seems to build comparable amount of muscle mass in the short term. In the short term, I'm not saying you could do this for a year straight and make gains for a year because you wouldn't uh, because you're going to struggle and eventually with the progressive overload component. But yes, in the short term, meaning a few weeks time, uh, this sort of training produces just as much training as traditional hypertrophy work does, as much muscle mass, all right? That is what the data shows. It's not like only one study has been done at this point. There have been multiple studies. Um, it's a fair statement to say that seems to be the case. And when I talk about light weights for high reps, I don't mean doing 15 partial reps. When we say lightweight, we're talking about really lightweight, taking up to 20 to 30 rep sets to failure done over multiple sets. This isn't just one set either. Uh, the studies we've seen are showing like 20 to 30 rep sets, like four sets taken to failure, back to back uh, with a couple minutes between them, using weights as light as 30% of your max. So in other words, if your max bench is 300 pounds and you throw 100 pounds on the bar and you do four sets to absolute failure and they approach 30 reps, uh, it seems to gain just as much muscle as hypertrophy work. Uh, that is what the data seems to show. It, it actually works. Now, as a strength athlete, I don't like the idea of really lightweight building muscle, but it does seem to work, uh, particularly you know, in, in drug-free lifters. That's what's been studied. So when I make that statement, I don't like it, but I accept it. It's just like with creatine. People ask me, does creatine work? According to dozens of studies, it does. I've never seen it work in the real world. It doesn't work in me, so therefore, because I'm one of the one in three people that seem to have get no benefit from it, which is what the studies do suggest, because I'm one of those people, I have a bias against it. I think it's junk. I think it's garbage. Again, in other words, if a product doesn't work for me, and I've never seen it work in anyone I've worked out with or trained with or anything else, then I'm going to think it's garbage no matter what the studies show, and it's hard to deviate from that. And I think that's fair for me to say the studies say yes, I don't think it works. I, there's something's got to be wrong with the studies, but deep down I know it's probably because I'm a non-responder. I eat meat, stuff like that. It probably works in every vegan who's ever tried it. Probably works in every vegetarian who's ever tried it. People who eat significant amounts of meat, not so much. And since I don't plan on being a vegan or a vegetarian, I don't see a whole lot of use for creatine. Uh, so that's kind of the point we get to with some of this too, with the light weight. It does seem to work. Uh, that's the reality. Now, here's the caveat. That video wasn't about a natural lifter coming in and rotating in phases of really lightweight. That had nothing to do with the context of that statement. What I stated in that video, there's a reason guys like Jerry Ward lose all their size when they come off gear. I've been training, uh, I mean, obviously I spent several years not training and people need to realize that I haven't been training for decades continuous. I spent a year in bed sick and then I couldn't train for a few years medically. And then I came back and started training again. Uh, but I've been around this a couple decades. I've been around gear a couple decades. Uh, I was around gear back in the days when bodybuilders weren't as big as they are now. Uh, back when guys completely cycled off was really, really common. Now, guys who came off of their gear, one of the things I noted 
and I've, I've seen at least in my life 20 different guys who came completely off gear, cycled off, did PCT, all of that, who I saw day in, day out, worked around, trained around, went to the same gyms with them, talked about them, what they did. Uh, if, if I were to take the 20 guys and use as an example, I notice a consistent trend. Six months after they're, they're, they came off their gear, the guys who trained with a lot of fluff with lightweight and didn't do a lot of heavy barbell movements, a lot of big heavy compounds, lost almost all their size. They shrunk when they came off. All right, that is something I noted. All the guys who continued to do relatively heavy barbell work seemed to retain 90% of the size that they put on. Uh, and when I say heavy, I mean a, a perfect example. There's a friend of mine I had. I knew him for a long time. I worked out with him sometimes as a workout partner for over a year. Uh, he would do all his stuff and he would come off. And as long as he maintained at least, say, 275 bench presses for eight, uh, 225 incline presses for eight, you know, 315 squats for 12, things like that. That's what he did. Uh, as long as he maintained and did his weighted chin-ups, as long as he maintained a decent weight on the bar, and that's not real heavy, guys. That's not super heavy. He wasn't a massive guy. All right, he was about 200 pounds, but he did do stuff. Uh, and did it always under a doctor, did PCT. That's the way he did it. He was older than me at the time, and a guy I knew. And he would maintain the overwhelming majority of the size. He would lose some of the fullness, but he would maintain even, and he would go six months in between doing stuff again. That's how he did it. He always did blood work. That's, he was relatively responsible. Uh, he maintained almost all the size. He would lose about five pounds. And we can attribute that to probably intramuscular water weight. I would watch these other guys who came in and they did tons of lightweight cable work and other stuff and maybe a little bit of barbell bench press. The guys who did a lot of fluffy pump work, real high rep work uh, without getting in and just doing big heavy movements, they would deflate like a balloon within a few months of coming off of everything. Uh, and that's just an observation I've made over the years. And look at the way Jerry trains. And Jerry always says, because Jerry trains a certain way and he works around people who train that way, that every time he sees guys come off and go on their TRT and everything, that what happens? They lose all their gains. And that's why he doesn't believe that TRT or whatever can maintain gains from people who used. Uh, it's the way he trains. He uses, he doesn't do 30 rep sets to failure four of them back to back either, like we're talking about in those studies. He comes in and he literally plays. He does partial reps with lightweight. We know partials build less muscle mass. All right, there's enough data out there to show that too, that we know doing partials for, for size is stupid. Um, it, it really is, it really is. There's sports specificity reasons, but he, he trains with uh, really lightweight, doesn't do full range of motion. He does a lot of fluff and pump. He doesn't do enough training volume. He doesn't use enough tension, any of that stuff. Uh, and that's a big, big difference. Uh, and that's the observation I've made over the years. And I think people need to grasp there's a big difference between talking about what seems to put muscle in studies on people over the course of a month or two versus what will maintain muscle on guys who have been using drugs and who come off of those drugs. All right, we are talking about a world of difference. Just because something showed some muscle growth gains in, in a laboratory setting and, and young healthy lifters doesn't mean that that's the best approach to maintaining muscle uh, in people who are coming off of stuff. And I've always noted that if they're able to maintain the amount of weight on the bar or close to it, those guys will tend to hold onto their size better. A lot better, dramatically better. It's very noticeable, the difference. Uh, so again, there's something to be said for mechanical tension for guys who are trying to hold on to muscle mass for whatever reason. How about the fact when you get older, when anything changes in your hormone profile or your age or anything else, uh, your dieting, how about your cutting? That reduces anabolic hormones. Doesn't reducing calories reduce IGF-1 and everything else? Of course it does. Of course it does. So back to the point, in my observation also, people who can maintain similar weights on the bar without the weight dropping dramatically tend to hold onto their muscle a lot better when cutting body fat. Because isn't cutting body fat a similar scenario to people coming off of gear? A shift in your anabolic hormones. People take gear to boost intermuscular IGF-1. That is the mechanism by which it works. Reducing food, reducing carbs, reducing calories reduces intermuscular IGF-1. 
So again, same observation. I don't recommend that guys who are wanting to hold on to their muscle mass when they cut go on programs using nothing but really lightweight and tons of isolation movements either. I think you need moderately heavy barbell movements. Big heavy compounds will hold on to muscle better and it's the same concept. Uh, and we're confusing retaining muscle mass with healthy people with a, a normal amount of hormone production who are eating in a calorie surplus with what they do to gain muscle may not transfer over to holding on to muscle that you've already gained when there's a shift in the uh, hormonal environment in which you're working, which can be diet related, it can be drug related, it can be age related. Uh, so perspective guys. Alright guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.